You're listening to El Podcast, the Ellie Castro Show. I am Ellie Castro. And I am Emeline Ramos. Emeline is my girlfriend. Yes. Por ahora. Hey. And forever. That's right. Okay. How was uh, Chicago last weekend? Oh, you, amazing. Yes. you, uh, Emeline came along with me to visit her family as well as attend uh, my shows. What did you think? Oh, your shows are great. I think the Chicago public loved it. Your fans in Chicago loved El Show. So good. Yes. And what did you like about it? Uh, I think I like that you introduced Chicago to your new style, you know, the new style of show that you have, the improv, the comedy, the sketch. And the stand-up. And the stand-up. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then on Sunday, we went to the Winter Salsa Festival that Mike Yo produced at Joe's Live. That felt kind of unreal. There were so many people there. Yes. Uh, what do you have? 13, 14, 1,500 people? Yeah. At one point, I looked at Blanca and I was like, we looked at each other and we said, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I feel like we're at a club and mm -hmm. it's a Sunday. Yeah. She's a part of every successful production that Mikey's done. Yeah. So shout out to Blanca Rodriguez in Chicago. And what did you think of the bands? They were very good. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. And local bands. It's great to see Chicago talent out there and being supported. And we had five bands, all high quality. And the wonderful thing is that, you know, you were home by 7.30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could recover from your sore feet. And if you had a little bit too many drinks, so you could recover from that too. A lot go to people, work on Monday. <laughs> a lot of people had maybe too many drinks. I don't think they realized that it was, you know, 3.30 and they were on their third shot. Because it gave you that club feel. Well, yeah, it was dark. There was music playing. People were dressed up. Yeah, but they were very professional. I mean, uh, we had all ages there. It mm -hmm. felt classy. Yeah, though, right. There was an older crowd, but it was a you know very mature older crowd. It didn't feel like una fiesta patronale. You know what I mean? It felt classy. It felt nice. <laughs> you go into a place. What's the first thing you usually do? Uh, walk around and scope the area. Scope who's there. Do I know anybody there? Do I not want to run into anybody? That's the first thing you think about. Wait a minute. You were scoping the area <laughs> to see if you didn't, like who? I, I don't know. Anybody. People, like an ex? Always an ex. Yes. Really? Yes. And then, I don't know, there's always people that you kind of don't want to run into. I don't know, from high school or right, whatever. Hold on. Hold on. What? You didn't tell me you were scoping the Joe's live for an ex? What's that? <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> I didn't say I, def I was, I just said, I think people do that. No, no, that's not what I asked. <laughs> I didn't ask, you know, I, I'm asking what you do. Did you go in there like that? No, I didn't. See, now you're not going to get lying <laughs> to me. <laughs> I, feel like I went in, and see, the thing is, I got there by myself, and I'm pretty much, a, I'm a very shy person, so I was there by myself, so I was like, oh, I don't like being around all these people by myself. I need to find someone to walk around with, but luckily my friend came, and she was, uh, She was my partner for the evening. But did you still scope? Yes, I did. I scoped just to make sure there was nobody there. Okay. <laughs> so was there an ex? No. Would you tell me if there was an ex? Yeah. Would you tell me at the moment, like as soon as it would happen, or would you tell me like the next day? I'd tell you later on that evening. But I would still be there? Yeah. Why wouldn't you tell me like right away? Because I'm not going to tell you something like that in the middle of your work. Oh, okay. I, I'm I, on a break. Then yeah, I'm probably on a break. Now, why would that be the first thing you tell me on a break? Ah, oh, you see? That's why I was going to tell you at the end. <laughs> no, but seriously, you would tell me right away or you would tell me later after the fact? I honestly would tell you later after the fact. Like later on that evening after you were done working. But I would still be in the club? Yes. Like when, like at dinner, when we went to dinner. I would tell you at dinner. That would be after? Yeah. Okay, but then I'd be like, well, why didn't you tell me while I was still there? Because they'd be like, Pa, you were working. I didn't want to no. talk about that while you were working. No, that's because you <laughs> wouldn't want me to be like, where is he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't understand that. But in that case, aren't you kind of defending your ex? No. Aren't you kind of standing up for him and protecting him? No. Then why wouldn't you just tell it me, oh, by the way, see because that guy right there? it doesn't matter, so I don't need to bring it up. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ja, punto, se acabó. <laughs> If I ran into I don't want to know from well let me finish. I don't want to know. You wouldn't want to know, but I wouldn't I would want to know. Why? Well, because if if I'm going to spend the night with my girl knowing there's a dude somewhere in that room staring at you all night and at me, I'm going to want to know who it is. It's kind of creepy. I mean, what if I'm having drinks with the dude? I'd definitely tell you. Like stay away what? from him. <laughs> no, I'm already having drinks. You'd be like, "Oh, babe, can I see you for a second? I'd be like, "No, come on. I'm having drinks. What's your name? Bro, what's your name?" Ooh. But that would be on you for not warning me, for not letting me know. Okay, I would let you know before you had drinks with him. You wouldn't know that. 
Because I'm socializing. What if I text you, hey, babe, come over here. I'm, I, I found this dude. He's really he's a good guy. Oh, that'd be awkward. Yeah. Yeah. And guess who you'd have to blame? Uh, me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I told you I wasn't going to win this one. That's why you would have to tell me immediately, babe, come over here. By the way. So you would want to know. For but, future references, you would want to know. Of course I'd want to know. Okay. So that I can avoid those awkward moments. Okay. I don't want to become best friends with some dude. That, that happens to be your ex. What if I? What if we click? All of a sudden, oh, we're going to go to the game together. Ooh, no, no, no. Well, then, no, no, no. You should have okay, told me. Okay, then I will tell you. Now I know. Okay, so that's been resolved. Yes. We don't have to go to counseling. No. All right. We're good. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so with us today is my cousin, Angel Vergara, or we call him Luisito. It's an interesting story because he's a world-renowned chef. Ladies and gentlemen, my cousin, Luisito. Hey, how's everyone? See, see, I, I say world renowned because the fact is, world, in this, no, that's too much, man. World, that's a lot. That's a lot to. That's a lot of weight. Well, in this house, if you can cook something other than chicken, uh, you are world renowned because in this house we're very simple. We do our uh, chicken with rice, and sometimes we do salads. Um, Nothing wrong with good chicken and rice, huh? Good chicken and rice. That's yeah, it. Yeah, like, that's yeah. all. That's all you really need is good chicken and rice. Yeah, I know, but we're talking about every day. Right. So you went to uh, cooking school. I did. Up in New York. <laughs> yes. So you know how to cook just about anything. I can attempt to cook just about anything, yes. So you're being you're being modest. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean you have to be humble. It's a it's a craft that takes a long time to like master. Okay. So how many different types of dishes can you cook? An endless amount? Wow. Really? Wow. Hey, it's, now, it's the technique that you have now, to now you stop being modest. You're like, I don't know, uh, an endless... As long as I have a recipe, I guess I could cook. I could uh, cook anything. But, I mean, I do... I mostly focus on, like, uh, Spanish and, like, Caribbean and European-style food. Okay. <clears throat> what would your specialty be? If you had one one dish to prepare to impress somebody. Let's say I had Mark Anthony and J-Lo, right? Because they're secretly back together, but they haven't admitted <laughs> it. If they're coming over for dinner, what are you making? I guess I would have to make Puerto Rican food at that point. Okay. I don't. I really. I don't. I don't know if I have a specific dish, but I like. I have a specific technique that I like to cook, which is like braising meats, which is really what you're, you're cooking food in liquid for a prolonged period of time and a shallow liquid, and it usually brings out the most flavor and and anything. It's actually probably the, be, the most simple, like easiest way for anybody to build flavor in a dish at home alone. You know, it's usually it's one pot. One meal, yeah. Easiest is a microwaved meal. Okay, fine. True. Let's, True. If you want to get technical, that's easy. That beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Which, by the way, ironically, is how you were raised. Right. I was, yeah. Your mom. Definitely. Cannot cook. I, I didn't eat good food till I went to culinary school. That's correct. I mean, <laughs> or it's not gourmet, let, me take, let me take that back for you. Uh, gourmet food. Yeah. Titi Leila, your mother, was notorious for uh, making us hot dogs. Microwave hot dogs. Microwave hot dogs. She would slice them up, and she'd give you little toothpicks and uh, ketchup on the side, and she'd call it hot dogs. Shrivel up. Okay, so hot dogs. You get like get hot dogs. That in hot pockets. Hot pockets. <laughs> That's all we ate. And juice, right? Like and mini juice. juice. Huh? Mini made juice. We drink mini made yeah, juice. Yeah, mini made juice. Yeah. El, el polvo. Ante el polvo. Pasa el jugo. So it's incredible, right? That from that, from eating, you know, uh, uh, hot dogs and, and hot pockets for hot dinner. Hot uh, that you went on and to become a chef. It's weird. it's ironic. Right? That is a true definition of irony. How a chef is born from that. From I, that. I told a culinary school teacher of mine, a chef professor, that he asked me why I started cooking. So I said, "It's because my mom doesn't know how to cook." <laughs> <laughs> Laughed. <laughs> I thought I was being. I thought I was kidding, but I never. I was like, "No, that's that's a true story." Did you, you know, just oh. say your Puerto Rican mother does not know how to cook? <laughs> that's correct. Self admitting. She's not afraid of. She's not afraid to admit it. Ya no cocina porque es que eso está tanto trabajo y la cocina me da un calor en esta cocina. Y nada, pues yo hago un sándwich y le digo a los nenes que, que, que preparen lo que quieran porque ya I yo mean, comí. I will say this. She did teach me how to cook rice and beans well, at the very least. Rice she and beans. That was like the very basic. I did get that. I'll cook them better than her now. I right. mean, she probably won't. Yeah. Rice and beans with hot pockets. <laughs> That's it. That's rice and beans with hot pockets. That's the only thing my mom, my mom can cook a good rice and beans. That's about the yeah, only. but I need meat. But ponle hot dogs. No, it was my, it was anything from the freezer. It was anything from the freezer section that we would do. Oh wow! So it was uh, she had a pot of rice and beans, and then we go into the freezer and dig out. 
It got to be. Yeah, well, she, would e- she would even take it out to the frost. Ah, pues, ustedes quieren, quieren carne, pues está congelada. Yeah, pretty much. Pues, pues, para eso quieres carne, para tener que ir al freezer. Ah, oh, can I just get eggs then? Ah, pues yo te puedo hacer unos huevitos fritos con arroz si quieres. No. Pues todos are, los días. Those are great food too. Huevo frito con arroz, that's it. All right, so back to Mark Anthony and J-Lo. I want to know what you're going to put on that plate. Carne guisada, that's what it would be. Carne guisada. Carne guisada. Okay, can we, but can we can we give it a different name? Carne guisada sounds I like uh, Saturday I mean, afternoon. I, I could, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like in campo. ¿Qué <laughs> tienen? Carne guisada, ¿qué vamos a otra vez? Beef stew. Uh, the French call it beef bourguignon, you know? Carne guisada, it's, it's all the same. Like the fr- Everybody has, every country has a technique for braising some sort of red meat. But that's what I'm saying. It's got to be like uh, carne guisada a la braise. A la bourguignon. A la bourguignon. A la you know? bourguignon. That sounds... That sounds different. Because then I'd be like, oh, carne guisada a la something. Okay. Because if it's carne guisada, I'd be like, ah, ¿quién lo está haciendo? She's got to be over 65. <laughs> if it's if she's over 65, it's going to be good. Well, that's true. Okay, so this Typically. carne guisada a la what? A la bourguignon. A la bourguignon. Yes. <laughs> For those who know how to cook, why don't you go ahead and talk that that cooking language and tell them how you would prepare la carne guisada a la bourguignon. Well, carne, typically you, you start with red meat you cut it down and you sear it into your pot developing those brown like the brown flavors and once you get those your meat nice and seared then you would deglaze it deglaze the bottom all the stuff that gets stuck in the bottom of the pan when you're cooking a right. lot of people get like if you burn that that's really all the flavor for the rest of the dish so if you get a nice little brown bottom when right. you're uh, browning your meats then when you introduce liquids to those things they kind of lift up and they wait i don't throw that out to, i throw that out no, you don't want you want to leave all that stuff in the pot in the pot that's like brown and all the bits and then you want to introduce your wine or you know your your beef stock or and that sort of stuff and cook it down with your vegetables and stuff like that. And you basically just put it in the oven about an hour hour and a half depending on the size of your meat, 2 hours, 3 hours if it's big chunks of oh meat and then God. that's it. Got to wait 3 you hours. You do have to wait. That you do have. But you don't have to do anything to it while you're waiting. You're just waiting. Ah, oh, but the microwave is a minute and a half, man. I can't beat the microwave. That Come on, man. <laughs> Three can't hours. Can't if Emily never said, Mia, then when I can make it, I just have to put it in the oven. Okay, it'll be ready in three hours. I'll be like, we're going out to eat. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. We're going out to eat. That's what ends up happening. Most people do. But you prepare it. If you could prepare it the night before and you prepare a lot of the it, you always before. have. night before. You always have enough to eat through the I week. I can't be thinking about what I'm going to eat 24 hours from now. I can't. And braised, braised meats are like soup. They taste better the next day and the next day. It tastes better. They develop flavor overnight. I don't doubt it. See, it's the commitment level that I admire. Because Emily will sometimes do that. She'll, she'll take a uh, meat and she'll season it. And she'll put it in the fridge. Right. I mean, the, the foresight involved is incredible, right? To be able to look ahead like that. Because I'm usually like, nah, I'm good. If anything, I just want like maybe a, a granola bar at night. But you're right, seasoning right, right. meat for the next day. Yeah. That's, that's I'm, In restaurants, we're usually working about a day or two in advance a lot of times. So when, if I'm, when I'm coming into the restaurant, sometimes we're preparing things for the next day and so forth. It's the only way to stay up with you know really good food. Really good food usually takes a while to cook. No, oh, man. So you've worked in restaurants. Yes. You've worked in restaurants in Orlando. You've also worked in Miami. In Miami, yeah. Okay, so give me some give me some experiences that a lot of people don't know about um, that, that take place when you're a chef. Because you, you were a head chef in a restaurant. Yes. What, for, that take place in a kitchen. I'm trying to think. There's one. There was a time where somebody, I worked in a hotel, which I won't name. And, uh, like somebody, the Hilton. Yeah, it was a really nice hotel. Like the Hyatt. Yeah, here in Orlando, yeah. Uh-huh. I worked at a fancy hotel. The Ritz. And, uh, and somebody had messed up uh, a vinaigrette. As a cook, you know that it's one part vinegar, three parts oil, if you're trained. So in those high-end uh, places, we had a new guy who came in, and he messed up the vinaigrette. The mixture? The mixture. So um, the sous chef who was in charge got really angry. He was like, you're only supposed to use X amount of vinegar and proceeded to pour the rest of the bottle onto his like uniform for messing it up, for messing up the vinaigrette. And then told him to start over once again. I was, I, when I, I saw that and I was like, wow, this is tough business. <laughs> so that was like, it was, it was happening. Yeah, no, for sure. So he spent the rest of that shift smelling, smelling like vinegar. Yeah. And finishing up his vinaigrette before he went home. But, and it was, and we used to fill up trash can size vinaigrettes. You oh, see? it's a lot. It's a lot. They're big batches. This is for, we supply the whole hotel. The entire hotel with uh, all uh, the uh, It makes you think differently sauces. about vinaigrette. 
I don't even like vinaigrette. Right? Because that's, is that the popular dressing for salad? Vinaigrette is, is what a lot of people go to. If you don't want like a really heavy, creamy dressing, use yeah. vinaigrettes that tend to be lighter. People who don't want to eat a creamy Caesar will choose a vinaigrette as a lighter option, you know, depending. I went to a restaurant uh, in Puerto Rico. Uh, I don't want to mention any names, <laughs> but maybe it was called Raices. Okay. And. I was eating my meal, and I noticed that there was a hair in my mofongo. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So I called the waiter over, and I said, there's a hair in my mofongo. He takes the plate and removes it. Ooh. Okay? R- removes the hair. Removes the plate. Okay, he removes the plate. From my table. Okay. He comes back and says, would you like to order anything else? Since I hadn't, I hadn't even finished it. I said, right. why would I want to order anything else if what I ordered already had a hair in it? And it's originally what you wanted. That's what I want. I want a mofongo, right? Right. So he goes, oh, let me speak to my manager, right? Some guy comes over. I guess he was the host, maybe, or the assistant manager. I don't know. And he goes, well, you know, uh, since you're not willing, uh, you're not, since you're not wanting to order anything else, I'll just give you a 10% uh, discount on your total meal. I go, listen, I'm not going to pay for any of this. I'll put you, I'll put it like that. I'm not paying for any of this. I just want you to wrap whatever we're not doing, whatever we're, we're done eating, you know what I mean? Rightfully I, so. Right. I just want you to wrap this up. I'm, I'm gonna let, You know what? I brought you over to let you know I'm leaving. They should have taken the plate and at, and immediately said that they were going to bring you another one. You could have objected, but... I did. They, okay. Well, yeah. I did because I have no confidence in the right, kitchen. Right, right, right. And then, then they should wipe that off the meal pretty much. But that. here's what I'm saying. They didn't acknowledge that there was a hair. Yeah, that's right. You get me? In other yeah. words, don't make me look like I'm crazy. <laughs> like, it, it, it was a curly right. cue. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Which is never good. I'd rather have a straight hair yeah. than a curly cue, right? But he didn't even look at it. He just, like, took the plate away. Right. Look at it and be like, oh. No, that's terrible. That's you know, bad like, management. Ooh. Right. And then go, okay, so well, you, want, you, you, you want anything else? Right. It's not like I said that that plate was cold. Right. It had a curly cue hair in the mofongo. Not that it, I'm talking about... It was cooked into the mofongo. Oh, you understand? Yeah, yeah, it gets pretty bad. Right, like that, when yeah. you pull it out, it comes out with food. Uh. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you, man? <laughs> and, and so they were like, well, we'll just give you a 10% discount. No, you ain't. No, 10%, and 10% is nothing. Are you 10, serious? Like, yeah, I, I told them, I said, listen, I, I'm not trying to negotiate with you. I'm just letting you know I'm leaving. I'm walking out this establishment, and it's going to seem awkward if you follow me with a bill. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we do horoscopes? We were all raised around horoscopes, right? I find them entertaining. I find them amusing and sometimes uh, revealing. So, Luisito, what's your horoscope? What's your sign? Uh, I was born in February, Aquarius. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to read it in Spanish, okay, because it's in Spanish. There's actually an English translation for it, but I'll have Emmeline translate it. So you can see how, how difficult it is, okay? Acuario, establece metas esta semana ocupada y trabaja duro para lograrlas. Ve con paso firme. And now, Emmeline will translate. Establish goals this week, hard and firm, good goals, and work really hard to establish them. <laughs> All right, that, that was good. I mean, that was good. Here's the official translation. Set your goals this busy week and work hard to achieve them. Steady as you go, mate. See, I'm starting to think that the original horoscope was in English, right? And they translated it to Spanish. It has, it has to be because it did. It, yeah, it doesn't it make did, sense. It doesn't go. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't flow right. Man. No, no. Okay. So how would you interpret that? That's your horoscope for the week. Let's repeat that. Set your goals this busy week and work hard to achieve them. Steady as you go, mate. I try to do that every week, really. So. Right. Is that a hor- <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like it's, I wake up and do that all the time. I try at least. Is that a horoscope or a mandate? <laughs> it actually, it sounds like the fortune in a Chinese cookie. That actually sounds like my father. Set your goals, okay? This week, work hard, right? Because otherwise, how are you going to achieve them? Except my father wouldn't say "steady as you go, mate." He'd say "avanza, zangano." <laughs> okay, one, two, all right. Emmeline, what is your sign? I am an Aries. All right. Aries in Spanish, and Lucito will translate. Here we go. Está bien soñar en grande, pero esta semana 
pon los pies sobre la tierra para determinadas acciones. Good luck. It's okay to dream big. I forgot. But this week, uh, put your feet on the ground. Is that what it said? Yeah, it was pretty good. Put your feet good. on the ground close. and... Uh, oh, someone. Here's the official translation. It is fine to dream big dreams, but this week, have a reality check to determine actions. Hmm. All right, Emily, now what's your take on that? My reality check for this week is that we're moving and I'm not ready to pack up. <laughs> I'm not ready to move out. That so true. that's my reality check. Wow. Okay, so you're saying the horoscope in this case is accurate? Yeah, it's true. I think so. Yeah. It is fine to dream big dreams like us moving, but this week have a reality check to determine actions. Yeah, we didn't pack. That's true. We did not pack. Yeah, no, we, we left everything to the very last second. I refuse to pack. That's why I hired movers, right? So I told the movers, I go, uh, by the way, first question, do you have a truck? He said, yes. Second question is, do you have boxes? <laughs> He said, yes. Normally we have about 30 boxes in the truck uh, because we move a lot of elderly people. And so they're not going to pack. We do everything for them. I said, treat me like an elderly person. Okay, view me as a very elderly person. I'm not doing nothing. You understand? I'm not packing nothing. You're going to come in with your boxes and I'm just going to point at stuff. That goes, that goes, that goes in the truck. That goes, that goes in the garbage. That's it. My pointing is all the work that I will do. Luckily, I'm not even going to be here and that's all up to you. I yeah. am so excited about that. Yeah. Well, you know, she has to go to work. That's how we're paying for the movers. <laughs> 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 Nothing better be broken when I get home. Here's my sign. I will take volunteers for the translation. Anybody? Okay, here we go. Tauro, con Marte y Venus influenciándote, procede con cautela en algunos o todos tus esfuerzos románticos. All right, good luck. Emmeline is going to try translating. Here we with go. With Mars and Venice influencing you, be cautious with all your romantic moves or your romantic uh, endeavors. I don't know, wow, something like that. Wow, you That's nailed great. it. You yeah, nailed it, except, <laughs> except in school, they taught us that the planet is not Venice. Or Venus. I don't know. Venus. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, it's Venus, okay? It's not, it's not Jupiter. <laughs> She wants to go to Venice. I, yeah. I do. That's on our list. So, yeah, with Mars and Venus influencing you, proceed with caution in any and all romantic endeavors. Apparently, I've got planetary influencers, so I've got to proceed with caution with what? With you? I don't know. We're good. I don't know about this horoscope. I don't know. Are we? Yeah, we're good. Horoscope is telling me to be cautious. So, are we? Is there something you want to tell me about the ex you ran into? <laughs> At the I Winter did not Salsa run Festival? into any exes, I swear. <laughs> I mean, you were telling me you were scoping the scene, so I think my horoscope is telling me to proceed with caution because you may have bumped into somebody you haven't told me about. Calmate, it's okay, we're good. <laughs> no me digas que me calme, because I'm, I'm being cautious, okay? I'm being cautious according to my horoscope. No, no need to be cautious, we're good. I promise. All right, we'll take it up with Venice. Okay, I okay. will. <laughs> <laughs> And that is El Podcast, the Ellie Castro Show. Thank you to Emmeline Ramos. You're welcome. Thank you to my cousin, Luisito. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And for more information on my shows, go to elliecastro.com. Remember, mi gente, life is so much better when you're laughing. Gracias.